We have made it to the biggest city in the entire world. It's got giant towers and castles, some of the cutest food you'll ever see, dinosaurs of all shapes and sizes, and so much more. We're starting our morning off at a very iconic Starbucks. Probably not as unique as the one in Kyoto, but this is the one that sits above Shibuya Crossing. It's very busy, very popular, and very hard to get a seat. <laughs> we have a slight view of the crossing at the moment, but nonetheless, it's still a cool place to pop into if you're in the area and you're looking for a coffee while admiring the crossing. Also, any excuse for us to break the budget and get a Starbucks, but speaking of the budget, the budget no longer exists because today, is our one year anniversary of Go for Lunch. This one is just as much for you guys as it is for us. But we're gonna enjoy it more. <laughs> I stumbled across a mandarake, which I don't think we've put in our videos yet, but I personally love it. It's kind of like a secondhand store for like anime lovers. They've got like figures, trading cards, video games, like everything like that. And this is a particularly cool location here in Shibuya because it's actually like underground. So I think we have to check it out. This is like actually underground. I think we were like four stories down. <laughs> Well, it is very easy to get lost in that store. I think we're lucky to be making it out alive, unlike some others. I come in peace, but please subscribe. Guys, we can see the Scramble Crossing over there. It's not that busy this morning, surprisingly. What? <laughs> it says 14th floor to 45th floor. <laughs> We just went up 31 floors and now we're going up an escalator because we're not done yet. Next up we've come to Shibuya Sky. Really feels like we're in the sky right now. The area up here is absolutely huge. A little bit of netting in some places but otherwise like open top. There are couches behind me that you can see, like lounges, and there are heaps of them so there's plenty of space to sit and take in the view. And of course it's 360 views of Tokyo so I was able to see a Tokyo sky tree in the distance, I was able to see Yoyogi Park, so many different helipads, as far as the eye can see just buildings and Tokyo that I often refer to as the city of cities and it really feels like that. It's just endless buildings in every direction you look. The real question is Tokyo or New York? Who do you pick? Oh, I don't know. I love New York. Depends on time of year. Guys, right behind me is Mount Fuji. It's very difficult to see. In fact, you can't really see it. I think I can see it, but very overcast today. I'm using my imagination a little bit, but it's in that direction. Okay, I have to admit, this is really, really cool. And that's coming from someone with like a massive fear of heights. Good things to know before coming here, which we didn't. First of all, your camera needs to be on a strap. And we luckily, like just by coincidence, put our camera on a strap today. I'm thankful for because otherwise you can't bring it in. You cannot bring in any sort of tripod, whether it be tiny or big. No hats, pretty much no loose items, I suppose, because yeah. if you throw them over, you could do some serious damage. The good news is that you can put your stuff in a locker and you just leave a 100 yen coin deposit. And then you get one of these cute little key bands. <laughs> subscribe guys as I said before it's such a huge space up here and I think you could spend ages I would have loved to come at sunset because I think the views would have been even more incredible I've seen amazing sunsets on the escalator in videos but come at whenever you can we can only get the morning slot time we book through Kluke as we often and always kind of do in Japan highly recommend it and if you want to come here and do the same as us you can use the click app and use our discount code that we'll put on the screen right here highly recommend not sponsored or anything like that but we just highly recommend using Kluke as say slanches around on the cloud we're now leaving Shibuya and actually walking over to Harajuku, one of our favorite spots in Tokyo. I think last time we were in Japan, that's pretty much the only place we visited in Tokyo because we were so obsessed with it. It's about a one and a half kilometer walk. I think you can catch the train. It, it looks to be only like a one stop journey, so it's not too bad, but we've decided to walk. It's a very hot day in Japan. So it's probably a mistake, but there are plenty of sweet, delicious treats waiting for us. So it's probably good to get in some kilometers before we shove our faces full of food. Oh. 
We've arrived in Harajuku and the first thing that we've done is picked up one of these. These are one of my favorite things to possibly get to eat in Japan. It's just like a really sweet crepe. We've each gone with the strawberries and cream and ice cream chocolate crepe. Looks pretty good to me. That ice cream is needed. And as seems to be the tradition on this second trip of ours to Japan, we're kind of getting all the food we got the first time because we got the exact same crepe, I think, from the exact same place five years ago when we were here. No regrets. Yummy. I've never seen so many capsule machines in my life. Oh my god. Would you believe that we have not yet done a gashapon in Japan? We've been here four weeks, haven't done a single one, which I think is kind of like a crime to be in Japan that long and not do one. So we might have to pick one out here. I'm pretty keen on like a Pokemon or a Disney type one, which I've not really seen yet, but we'll pick one out. Guys, there's a second level. This is incredible. There's a gashapon for just about anything. I saw a milk tea gashapon, a cat. As a banana gashapon, Kirby gashapons, like snack gashapons. If you can think it, you can find it here. I'm going for the cats dressed up as our first gashapon in Japan because it's iconic. Do you have a preference yes. of which one you want to get? I really like this pose. Like, I sass. agree. I like that pose. It also like tops off. <laughs> I had the tops off, hands off. Are we ready? Oh, tops off, hands off. Tops off, a swimsuit attire. <laughs> yes. Put your hands in the air! Happy with, happy with that one. There are just unlimited number of cool stores in Harajuku. I think we've walked about 10 meters down the street, to be honest, because we keep just stopping to look in all the cool shops. If you like kind of character stuff, there's heaps of that. There's quite a few vintage stores as well. It's all just so cool. Make sure you look up and down as well, not just on ground level, because there are heaps of cool stores above or underground to check out as well. It's a macro and vending machine. Our next stop is a place in Harajuku. It's called Reissue and we've come here for a very specific reason. They make custom 3D art in the foam on your latte. So, of course, I've got Ted in my latte. I'm so excited to see it. I haven't seen Ted in almost six months. It's so sad. I might cry. And Stace has gone with Evie, the Pokemon, who she is obsessed with. So I'm pretty excited to see how they turn out. I've seen amazing things online. So very high expectations. Oh my gosh. <laughs> That's so cute. The grand reveal. Oh my god. Little <laughs> bubble. Okay, you gotta drink your Evie. I have to drink my dog, I think I feel. Mmm. I'm so excited you taste the good. Tastes kinda like Starbucks. I've gone for the hot vanilla latte option with a topping of Teddy and Stace has gone with the caramel iced latte with a topping of Evie as you can see. Both struggling to actually eat the foam because it's too cute. Well that was so good. Highly recommend even though it's $15 for a coffee. I mean you pay like close to 10 for a Starbucks. Do you get 3D art with that? Most of the time though. <laughs> So I recommend. And it tasted good as well. Often yeah. with places like that, it's kind of just the novelty, but it actually tasted really good. Yeah, well, we were saying it's the best coffee we've had in a while, like apart from Starbucks. So when you get your coffees, they give you a little like notice and it says who did your coffee and like where you can find them on social media, which is really cool. So shout out to George. <laughs> Highly recommend. And conveniently, now that we've had our coffee and our breakfast, and we've got some energy, Conveniently, just on the other side of Harajuku Station is Yoyogi Park, which is super convenient for us. We're gonna go check it out. It's so hot and sunny today, so I'm actually really excited to get in the trees a little bit. Maybe a bit of shade, that would be nice. But we're gonna go wander through now. And inside Yoyogi Park, you will find Meiji Temple. I'm sorry if I'm not pronouncing that right, but it's this huge kind of temple complex type area, which is just it's really peaceful being in the middle of this massive park. I suppose the gates kind of within the park lead you towards the temple. And I definitely recommend checking it out if you're gonna plan on walking through Yoyogi Park anyway. Guys, this shrine or temple is absolutely beautiful, but I'm obsessed with these trees behind me. Look how like perfectly round they are. They're like spheres, but don't go all the way, but just so cool. They perfectly frame the front of the shrine as well, just there behind me. 
which is pretty cool. You're not allowed to take photos like right up there or videos or anything, but even just being in here is cool. Like we're in the middle of a park. Like there's literally trees surrounding this whole area, which is super cool. It's definitely hot in the sun, unfortunately, but it's such a nice park just to stroll through, come across this like shrine. It's really nice. And plus it's location right next to Harajuku. Like why would you not come here if you're going to Harajuku anyways? And I dare say, anyone coming to Tokyo is going to visit Harajuku. So definitely recommend a visit to Yoyogi Park. It's beautiful. And we're just going to continue strolling through the park now. I won't lie, we're a little lost, but I believe this park kind of connects up the Harajuku area with like Shibuya kind of city, like where you'll find the scramble crossing and things like that. So behind me are actually barrels full of sake. And I think they're donated by different breweries every year. It's kind of like a prosperity thing, like prosperity of the sake industry and other kind of traditional Japanese industries. It's got quite a long history back to the Meiji Meiji era but they look pretty cool all different colors painted on the front of those but if you ever walk past them in Yoyogi Park and wonder what they are they're barrels of sake we have hopped on a train two stops from Harajuku and have come to Shinjuku actually for the first time since we've been in Tokyo which is crazy because Last time we were in Japan, we actually stayed in Shinjuku. So we spent a good chunk of time here. The first stop are the claw machines. Rosh is on the hunt for something special, even though we've won many a things throughout our time in Japan. But they're just so addictive. It's We just tell ourselves it's part of the Japan experience to do these machines. Like, you have to do it. Rosh won two the other day, and now she thinks she's like actually good and is the queen of these machines. So we shall see. Okay, we've now come to the floor with the gashapon and they've got this like interesting thing this is a 1000 yen a 2000 yen or a 3000 yen set and essentially when you put your money in either a capsule will come out and it either have a product in it or a key and if you get a key it will open up one of these there's no information about the chance yeah, like the no. probability <laughs> So it is a risky, risky game. But there's some really good stuff. A bunch of trading cards, there's some switches. But there's also no information about the product that will yeah, come out if you don't get keys. probably like something out of these, but, <laughs> but I, I want Josh to do it. <laughs> it. So this is the 3000 yen one, the top level. So you can see the Mario Switch OLED, a regular Switch OLED. We've got some Eevee Heroes for all you Pokemon fans. That is one expensive box of Pokemon cards. So some pretty cool stuff in there. What are you gonna do? I'm gonna play it safe and not play. <gasps> sorry, okay. sorry for all of you out okay. there. Okay. Shinjuku is such a cool, lively area. There are so many different colors, signs. 3D screens too, which is something I've been holding out to see here in Japan. It's the first one I've seen and it was so cute. And they also have a Godzilla head poking out of a hotel. You can't get any more Japan than that. And I think that when we come back next time, I want to stay in the Godzilla hotel. That would be pretty cool. Guys, Tokyo is truly like nowhere else we've ever been. It feels like a city full of cities because each little district feels totally different to the next. Shibuya feels busy in a more like corporate feel or shopping area in my opinion. Then you've got Harajuku which is certainly the kawaii area, very cute, lots of cool foods to try. Shinjuku, so many different restaurants, lights, I would imagine nightlife. And then Ikebukuro is like another kind of entertainment technology area similar to Akihabara but then again totally different. They feel so different to each other. It's like I said, it's a city of cities and I love it. And it seems that Godzilla blows some fake fire, maybe on the hour every hour. You can hear him roaring now, and strobe lights are coming out of his mouth. I think fire is a generous description. It was more just some some smoke. Maybe it'll look better at night. You have to use your imagination. But what other city has a giant creature like that blowing fire every hour on the hour? Um, I'll wait. Obviously, Diagon Alley. <laughs> no, I don't have to add the sound effect in. When I think of Tokyo, I think of Shinjuku. I don't know if that's because that's where we stayed the first time we ever came to Tokyo, or if it's because that's what's like depicted in movies and postcards, the bright lights and all of that. So I think Shinjuku is definitely somewhere you cannot skip if you're coming to Tokyo. It's definitely one of my favorite areas. With all that said about Shinjuku, and I do really love it, it does feel like the rebel child out of all the cities that we've been to, or like the areas that we've been to in Tokyo. It's just a little bit more rough around the edges, a little bit more cheeky. 
nothing wrong with that, but it definitely feels different. And as cool as Shinjuku is during the day, I want to see what it's like at night. And as you can see, it is very, very cool at night. The lights really pop that much more in the dark. I have to say it doesn't feel dark though, because there are so many luminescent lights around. It's such a cool place. This is why we love Tokyo. There's a lady sitting in the window of one of the bars here, and I genuinely thought that she was a robot until she started doing a bit more like human-like move. It's a little bit creepy. Stacey says she doesn't want to stand here for any longer. She's a little bit afraid. So we're gonna keep moving. This has been part one of our Tokyo series, but as you can see, we have so much more to come. Subscribe if you haven't already, and as a reward for watching all the way through, please enjoy this compilation of Stace failing at the UFO catches. We'll see you next week, but as for now, YouTube thinks that you should watch this video next.